Hey everybody, Professor Snart just uh, checking in once again as we continue rolling through our English 1152 poetry class. So it is Tuesday, October 3rd when I am recording this, 80 degrees outside, crazy. And so we're looking at our Wednesday or our Unit 4 Wednesday due date coming up pretty soon, at least when I'm recording this, and then again thinking about that reply date a little bit further out. So we want to take a quick look at um, some of the units that we've been in. Their first sonnets unit where people were recording their sonnets, I think there was like tons of really interesting recordings. And what's sort of fun, and I don't know if you would have listened to enough to, um, to necessarily experience this, but um, because we're all choosing from a fairly uh, limited number of sonnets, right? I think there was only four or five on the list. You can get um, multiple people who choose to record the same sonnet, but um, deliver it so differently. And of course, we're not like trained actors or performers here. But I think, you know, most people made a real effort not just to read the poem, but to actually like perform it or sort of add some emotion to it. Um, and you get even people reading the same sonnet, but the delivery makes such a difference, which I think is really fascinating to see. In unit four, we're kind of putting our money where our mouth is by writing a sonnet. Again, the point being not so much to, that you're a great sonnet writer necessarily, but that you are making every effort to follow the form of the sonnet. I'm suggesting the Shakespearean one, because it's the one that we have an example of right here, attending to, of course, the number of lines, but also um, the rhyme pattern, uh, the, uh, the way that the sort of pieces, the quatrains and the final couplet uh, work together. And then I think the most challenging part is that iambic pentameter, which I talked about in an earlier uh, announcement. Okay, so I'm going to jump into our next unit, get sort of a head start here. So I really like this one. A few new poems for us to read, some uh, kind of famous and older, others a little more contemporary. Um, this one happened to show up in a recent movie, the title of which Interstellar, maybe, I think. So it kind of gained new relevance, but is a pretty famous one. Okay, so a pretty um, actually conventional assignment here, but we're going to go about it in a slightly unconventional way. And that's explained in the, the, uh, the assignment right here, but I'll kind of walk us through it. So you're going to read the poems, and like I said before, you can do whatever web research you want, looking up meanings and themes. I'm less concerned about us being able to formulate that sort of stuff that you can just look up than, than we are with making that sort of meaningful to you. So yes, you can analyze or repeat an analysis of a poem, but like, can you think about that in more critical and creative ways? And that's part of what we're doing here. So reading uh, all the poems, hopefully you gravitate to one more than another or something will just sort of jump out. And then your job is to create a kind of uh, comparative analysis, which means that you're going to take one of the poems from the list and then a piece of music that you're familiar with and that you like. It shouldn't just be some generic thing that you Google that's easy to compare, but you have no like investment in or don't know anything about. The point is to find something that you is part of your everyday life and connect it with one of these poems, which is maybe not part of your everyday life outside of this course, right? And so you're going to connect it just like you would in a fairly traditional essay. The thesis is basically like these two things while they appear uh, dissimilar on the surface actually share a lot in common, so that's the basic thesis. And then you want to develop at least three kind of subpoints, as if these were body paragraphs, about how these two works are connected. So maybe a similar theme, a similar uh, setting perhaps, similar um, uh, characters portrayed, um, similar ending, happy, sad, you know, whatever you think that it is but get really detailed and granular about those connections. And then of course, you're gonna support those with actual quotes from whatever the poem you choose, but also the lyrics or any video material you find to go along with your song as well, since they usually have some sort of visual representation as well. So pretty right, traditional comparison essay. But instead of just writing that out, I'm asking you to record a video essay which could be you just talking into the camera, although I think a better approach is doing kind of a version of what I'm doing now, actually capturing your screen. So you're gonna talk with us kind of really more conversationally than as if you were reading an essay. But it would be great if what we were looking at on your screen was 
an outline so you're kind of walking us through the points with maybe the quotes that you've already pulled. Maybe there's visual stuff that you could show us as we go through, and you don't have to just stay on one static screen. You can sort of, sort of pop through different tabs that you might have open or different you know, things that you want to show us. So the idea is not to just write an essay and then read it into the camera or you know, record it like that. That defeats the purpose. The idea is to have you get sort of so comfortable with the idea of this comparison that you could almost have this conversation with us, sort of like you're talking to us and teaching us about your um, the comparison that you've chosen. So once again, we're doing something a little more technically involved than what some people might be used to, although in this day and age, you never know. So if you need technical help, by all means, reach out to me, but this has to be right soon. It can't be the night that the thing is due and then we try to fix it at the last minute. That's not gonna work. Um, and then, uh, as always, there's a reply component down here. Um, and since we're doing these as video things, I'd love it if people did replies as videos too. You don't have to, but it would be cool to see that. Um, so there is this sort of deeper pedagogical, like a teaching reason for why we're doing it this way. Um, but I'm not going to lie, in the online setting, I think it's sometimes just fun to, to see other people um, or to to have that more immediate contact where you're hearing someone's voice and they're actively kind of looking at the screen and walking us through these different components. Um, so yeah, deeper pedagogical stuff, but I think it also helps just to like build our sense of community. Okay, so as always, keep your eye on those due dates. Now that we get deeper into the course, it's really important that you start um, really keeping track of your grades and seeing how things are going. If you've missed stuff, why did you miss stuff? You know, you can always reach out to me if things are a little unclear. Uh, obviously doing things on time is super important, but also investing time, especially when it comes to replies, not just a sentence or two, but really kind of building out like you're actually having a, a conversation or a back and forth with somebody. Um, and like I said, keeping your eye on those due dates, kind of managing, getting one thing done making sure the replies happen, but also maybe moving on to the next thing. So you sort of have these two things unfolding at, you know, sort of the same time or in parallel. Okay, so hopefully everyone is enjoying this great October weather, um, watching baseball, watching football, lots of great sports going on. Um, just generally enjoying life and enjoying each other. We need more of that, I think. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, be in touch with me and I will talk with everybody soon.